Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Mary Ellen Lamb. I'm the Deputy Vice Dean of Admissions, Financial Aid, and Career Management here at the Wharton School. And I'm excited to have a conversation today with two of my favorite second year students who are with me now, um, Andra and Jordan. Um, we are looking forward to talking with them about their experience here at Wharton on a couple different levels. One from the, career pers or from the classroom perspective, one from the perspective of the community, and then also about leadership and other experiences they've had to give you a good introduction to what Wharton is really like. With that, I'm going to ask Andra to introduce herself, if you would. Hey everyone, my name is Andra. I grew up in Ghana, uh, went to Colby College for university. Uh, prior to Wharton, I spent seven years in London working in investment banking. Um, and um, another fun fact about me is that I have an eight month old son, so Wharton has been a very busy time for me. Love that, Jordan. Hey everyone, my name is Jordan Mock. I'm originally from Fort Pierce, Florida on the southeast coast. I went to the University of Florida undergrad where I was a packaging science major, which I promise is real, my diploma says so. Um, went from there to work for Colgate Palmolive for six years in various roles in packaging and supporting our plants across the world in Kansas, in the Czech Republic, and in New York City. Um, and excited to be at Wharton learning about marketing and operations. All right, so this is going to be fun for me because I know these guys pretty well. I've gotten to spend time with them, both talking about their careers, but also about their experience here at Wharton. And I'm kind of dying to hear them speak more formally right now about that. And then we're going to do a Q&A at the end for all the questions that you've been sending in. So I guess the first thing I want to say is, or the first question I want to ask you guys is, what surprised you the most when you got here? And let's take it from the classroom perspective, right? You both have pretty diverse academic backgrounds. so. Who wants to go first on that one? What surprised you most? One thing that struck me, and this translated from the preterm experience, preterm being um, the first month that we spend here at Wharton, into the classroom experience is the diversity of the student body. Um, so I said to a lot of people that it took three days until I met another ex-banker. And that diversity in backgrounds translates to a very rich uh, discussion environment within the classroom is that you have people from a variety of industries, education, agriculture, um, industries that you wouldn't sort of think are a natural fit for an MBA. And, and they're all here in the classroom with us. Um, and so it means that you know, discussing cases, talking about different topics, uh, you just get uh, perspectives from a variety of, um, of, of backgrounds and experiences, and it just enriches the classroom conversation. Yeah. yeah, and to build on that in the classroom, one of the things that I found so interesting right off the bat was how willing professors were to meet with you, both after class or you know on their personal time. And I had a lot of experiences where I was either intimidated by a professor's background or how they were in the classroom, like the way in which they conducted these case discussions, which could be really complicated. But then if you took the time to go and meet them in their office hours, they always had so much to add. We're so thoughtful about spending the time with you. And I had a lot of experiences where it was really a professor that you know, helped me do well in my first year. And so I now try to always take the time to you know, see the professor outside of class and get that additional experience because they're doing really cool research. They have a lot going on. And it's just so much more than what you get in the classroom. That's fantastic. Um, talk a little bit about your learning teams. Do you mind doing that for me? Um, one of the things that I hear a lot from students is concern, or from applicants, is concern about the team-based discussion. And I'm just wondering, when you think about your work with teams, it all starts with the learning team. Would you comment on your learning teams for me? So my learning team has six members. Um, there are two girls, two internationals, um, four Americans, all of us from very different backgrounds um, and, and sort of working experiences. Um, and of course, when you bring a number of people together with such sort of diversity of, of views and experiences, there, you know, the first few days you go through sort of growing pains of learning about each other, learning about your, your respective objectives of being here um, at the MBA. Um, but but what, what becomes obvious very quickly is that we all have a lot of respect for each other and what we're aiming to get out of the experience. And so we all sort of end up getting to this happy medium where you know, things happen, um, projects get delivered, um, and we're all equally happy with, with the outcomes. And so it, it struck me just how easy it was to get along with people that uh, seemed to have very different backgrounds from myself. And I think one of the ways in which Wharton does a good job of facilitating that early on is that you first meet your learning team on a retreat in a very different setting. Ours was on a golf course in Delaware. And you go through a bunch of really bizarre activities and fun little games, but it breaks the ice. It gets everyone down to the same page. And you realize, these are my peers. These are people 
who are of a similar age range. You know, they may have diverse backgrounds, but they all worked. They all want to be here to do something different in their career or to further their interests a little more. And so it definitely sets up that sort of level playing field. Everyone wants to contribute. And I think Andre touched on this a little. People are really transparent here. Everyone lets you know what their goals are. They let you know what they're trying to achieve. And so it really helps set the tone for that collaborative environment. I can tell you right now, I would not have passed my magic class or managerial economics if it hadn't been for someone on my learning team who took the time to walk me through problem sets and really help me understand what was going on in that classroom. So, I'm delighted to hear you say that because I think one of the big myths about Wharton is that it is super competitive. And I will often say to people, well, sure, it's competitive. There are lots of people all trying to achieve great things, but it's also collaborative. And you see it in the classroom. I see it a lot from the career management side when people are talking about preparing for interviews and you worked in finance in London, you probably spent how much time working with folks on that sort of thing? Working. Prepping for interviews and prepping for careers and that kind of thing. I, I mean, I did a lot of mentoring outside yeah. of, sort of my day job and so I, I don't know, maybe three to four hours per week. Yeah. Um, but it, it, you're absolutely right. It is a very collaborative environment here. Right. Um, and it becomes apparent very quickly sort of when projects stop, start coming in. Being from different backgrounds and taking classes that might not, might not necessarily be your strongest suit, you end up, you see very quickly that you need help and you know, help is very readily available. Yeah, and I think in recruiting it becomes the most apparent because students who used to work in consulting are around all the time offering to help case students. Um, I recruited for marketing and within the marketing club, a student-led organization, we set up hot groups where a group of six to eight students would get together every week, talk about what was going on in the industry, what questions might you face, uh, probably have one of the deepest question banks of any club on campus just because for years and years we've been accumulating, you know, what was the tough question that you were asked in your interview? And just having that support of your peers, if you had a bad interview, you could go back to this group and be like, guys, that was really <laughs> tough. And people said, yeah, I did the same thing earlier today. It was really tough. You know, you aren't alone in that. And I think we're seeing it even now as second years come back, may, might have liked, might have not liked their internships, and they're reaching back out um, to folks that, you know, may have helped them do one thing last year. Now they need help from somebody else to get into right. a different career. Um, when you think about some of those things, right, providing advice to each other and all that, talk to me a little bit about the academic side. And um, I think there is always mystery when you're looking at business schools around what the academics are going to be like. Can you guys talk a little bit about how you approached the core and the flex core and then maybe talk about a class that you really love that you were, you're inspired by, something like that? Uh, so the, the curriculum, I guess, um, if, to give some background, the curriculum is divided into sort of core classes, which are your basics in uh, sort of accounting, statistics, um, and then flex core, which build on that. Um, and so sort of within all the different disciplines, it allows you to explore certain aspects of it. Um, I personally came here um, with a bit of background in finance. I have a CFA, but I've also, I, I'd done that a while ago. So I also found that I needed to remind myself of some of these concepts, and so I didn't necessarily wave out of so you have the option to wave out of um, a lot of the core classes I didn't wave out of. So my first semester was spent just as a refresher on a lot of these concepts. And what I'm really excited about in my second year is to get into the sort of the, the nitty gritty of some of these subjects, um, take some um, electives that are sort of honing in on my personal interests. And um, this semester, I'm super excited. I'm only a week, two weeks into it now, um, but I've been, I'm taking idea generation and a systematic approach to creativity. A bit of a mouthful. Wow. <laughs> but what is uh, the, what's the gist of that? Um, the gist of it is that um, even though sort of creativity come, might come across as a sort of a bit of an airy fairy thing, and you're either born with it or you're not, um, that there is actually a, there's a way to put a method to the madness. Um, and you know, within the first few classes, we've learned some matrices and some 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 formats that can allow you to to make creativity a systematic process. And I was just fascinated. You can actually be creative in Excel. Like, who knew? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Um, um, and so the second year is, is more about sort of getting into, into the meat of some of these subjects, and I'm very excited. Very cool. Yeah, similarly to Andra, I didn't waive any of the core. And you know, what was interesting is I kind of found, for me, it wound up being a bit of give and take. There were classes where I needed a lot of help because I had no background in it. I didn't really catch on as quickly as some of the other students, and I had folks that helped me. Whereas there were other classes like operations management, a pretty easy course for a six-year engineer, I was able to give some of that back. And 
I think what's really cool is that there are just plenty of people here who are like, hey man, if you need help, like I can walk you through these problems or we can talk more in depth about uh, what's going on there. Um, similarly, now getting into second year and having the flexibility to take some more interesting classes, I would say one of the things I'm most interested for is marketing for social impact, which is a class about how to use marketing skills either to further public policy initiatives or for cause marketing um, if you're working at a big brand. And then also I'm taking a retail merchandising class where a professor comes in from Parsons in New York, you know, very in the retail world. And um, we only have her once a week, so it's a really long class each Monday, but I'm really excited to get started on that later in the fall. Very nice, very nice. Um, one of the things I hear students talk about a lot is their reach experiences, right? So whether that happens academically or career-wise or socially, um, or through leadership and some of the offerings of the leadership program. I'm wondering if you guys could touch on either something you've done or something your friends have done. I'm always so struck by hearing stories about going to Antarctica or sailing a tall ship and that sort of thing. What are some of the things that you've experienced beyond having an eight month old and getting your MBA, <laughs> which is its own reach experience, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll um, answer this with, with a few of mine. The biggest of which was probably Dance Studio. Nice. Um, so I would encourage folks watching to go look up some videos from our Dance Studio this year, just because it's hard to imagine 320 MBAs uh, dancing on stage. Um, I participated in 90s pop. Um, this was not something I had ever even imagined doing before, but you know, the, the spirit kind of catches you here and you get in, you sign up for some of these things. And I couldn't have asked for a better experience. It was really tremendous to see people outside of the classroom, outside of clubs, in just a very like unique social interaction. And that's where you find out if people are really going to encourage you and lift you up <laughs> is when you're going through something like that that you've never done before. 90s pop dancing. Yeah, yeah, 90s pop dancing was a big one. And then the other one, I think, speaks to a little bit of the student leadership component here. Um, as part of the marketing club, I was a producer for Battle of the Bands. And this is an event where six student bands compete on a stage at a concert venue in Philadelphia. We sold over 900 tickets this year. And planning the logistics of that and dealing with some of the like questions that crop up and things that students you know, wanted to know about how the event would be run and judged and all the, the little nitty gritty that I had never focused on before. It's just a huge learning experience and, and something I actually wanted to carry into second year. So now I'm kind of supervising the first nice. years who will be running um, Battle of the Bands. But you've you know, moved into management. Yeah, yeah, moved into management for the same event. So, but beyond that, I think some of the best stories I heard um, from sort of the leadership venture side and, and the unique experiences, um, people raved about Quantico and the ability to sort of see what some of our service members go through in those training programs. And then I had a really large group of friends that wound up going to Antarctica. And you know, a lot of people treat that as a once in a lifetime experience, which it is, but I think just the fact that Wharton has a structured way of yeah. doing that, they didn't just go to Antarctica, they went to Antarctica and learned how to lead a team and how to you know, manage through ambiguity and a lot of skills that you know, will translate into the workplace someday. Yeah. That's terrific. Um, those were great answers. I want to transition a little bit. Um, and can you guys give me a sense of what your exposure to the international flavor of this place is? Andrew, you touched on it when you talked about your learning team. And you said there are two internationals and the rest are American. Talk a little bit about some of that. I mean, I talk about diversity all the time. And I always say it happens in so many different ways here on so many different dimensions. Would you mind, as an international student even, would you mind yeah, taking so that first? I think in the official stat is something like 35% yeah. um, of the class is international. Um, but, but just beyond it being a stat, you, you see that sort of just as you walk across the campus, um, just really how diverse the, the campus is. Um, and that also translates into the, uh, I, I mentioned this before, it translates into the classroom experience that um, the, the professors are very careful to bring a selection of cases um, and, and, and examples from a variety of um, industries and geographies. And so whenever stories come up um, concerning a specific country, most times you'll find that there's someone in the class that's from that country. And again, when you have that sort of personal connection to, to these um, um, to, to certain things, it, it, it enriches the conversation. Um, and so I found, I found that to, to be sort of a great thing about Warden. Yeah, and I think 
um, on top of that, most of the American students here have had some international experience or are just really interested in you know, either international policy or international business in some way. I mean, one of the really interesting things in my cohort, there was a student who is from Tampa, Florida. Like we grew up in very similar like kind of homes. And when she introduced herself in class one day, she said, oh, I worked in consulting in Hong Kong. And it was like, you know, I, I would never have guessed that in a million years, but there are so many students like that. We have friends who have had NGOs in India or uh, have worked in Africa their whole careers, even though they were born in the US and it was just something that they got interested in at some point in their career development. So I think regardless of whether the person is from that area, has an interest in that area, it really comes alive in the classroom. And when you add on top of that, our folks in the Lauder program who are traveling to these places as part of their curriculum and you know have a deeper interest, it just really kind of ties it all together throughout the year. That's awesome. Uh, all right, so I hope not to make this too hard a transition, but let's talk about social life. Let's talk about the community to which you have joined. You're both involved in various clubs. Um, do you want to do you want to Andrew, take the first crack and talk to me about some of the work that you've done and that we've had the opportunity to work on together? Yeah, so one of, uh, one of the clubs that I belong to is the Wharton Africa Students Association. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great community, um, and it's a community not just of Africans, uh, but people that have curiosity, um, active interest uh, in the region, and so we have something like a hundred and something uh, members. Um, and you know, how I met Mary Ellen is that mm -hmm. one of the initiatives we were looking into is a specific a scholarship that's specific to African students. And so it was an idea that came to mind. You were like, who should we speak to about this? Uh, let's let's go, <laughs> let's go, to Mary let's go find Mary Ellen. Yeah. Um, so I accosted Mary Ellen mm -hmm. at an event, and she very happily listened to me, and, and mm -hmm. we've been we're friends since. It, yeah. um, another new initiative I've been involved in is the Wharton Women in Business, um, WIB. Uh, and um, it's, a, it's again, again, a great community of, uh, of, of women who are there to support each other. And actually, beyond that, it's a great community of women and men who are interested <laughs> in, um, in issues that relate to women. And so there's also an affiliate group called the, the, the 22s. Um, that, that's a group of Wharton men um, that support the initiatives of WIB. Um, but so that was a tangent. Um, one of the initiatives we've introduced within WIB is a mother's liaison role, which myself and another second year uh, are looking into, which is to make sure that Wharton is a supportive community for, for mothers. It, it has been, and we just want to make sure that the effort is a lot more structured um, and that you know, current mothers and mothers to come um, understand that you know, it's absolutely feasible to, to be a mother at school um, and, and to do an MBA and, and have as rich an experience as everyone else that, that is here. Um, yeah. So as far as my club experiences go, those are the two that stand out. I think I told you one of my favorite moments at graduation this year was uh, a mother came across the stage carrying twin newborns <laughs> and the dean had her diploma and he didn't know what to do. He was like, oh, hi, and he just dropped it down her hood and off she went. It was <laughs> a lovely moment for a mother at Wharton. Um, Jordan, how about you? So I think, um, you know, one of the things that was important for me coming from South Florida, being pretty far away, you know, I've lived in the Northeast before, but I wanted a bit of that connection. Um, I joined our Wharton Hispanic American MBA Association, and, you know, it was part of my heritage that I, over time, have become more and more in touch with, and so it was a group I really wanted to connect with, but also just served as a kind of informal network of people that I might not have met through marketing or through my classes. And so that was really great for forming a real sense of family. Um, I also participate in a lot of the different events that our clubs throw. So, you know, whether it's big parties or small group dinners or those sorts of things, I've, I've tried to put myself out there and get involved in a lot of things. And I think small group dinners are probably the most representative of the Wharton community because it's a long standing tradition where Someone hosts a dinner at a restaurant for five or six other students, and sometimes there's a topic, sometimes it's a general interest group, sometimes it's just a random group of friends. But just the idea that you know sharing a glass of wine and a meal is a really good way to, to meet one another, and it takes the really large student body down to a really manageable size for anyone. And so I always appreciate the invitation to one of those dinners and, and try to participate in a lot of them. Um, one that I did last year that was probably the most fulfilling one I've participated in was led by the 22s. And it was a conversation about women in the classroom and what can men do to better empower uh, their female peers and make sure that you know, their voices are being heard and 
I think in a lot of ways, you know, that onus is is on us from time to time to at mm -hmm. least advocate even more uh, than we have in the past. Was the group co-ed? It was a co-ed group um, led by a couple of 22s leaders and a couple of WIB leaders with just an assortment of others and just really interesting conversation and, and people were really encouraged like this is the time to say the things you might not want to say in class you know let's make sure we get everything on the table and it's it's really powerful to hear your friends talk about positive or negative experiences they've been through in their lives related to that topic right and how do you think that influences the way you're going to lead once you leave here how do you think all of these experiences are going to influence you once yeah, I you think leave? It, it just informs so much of those interpersonal communication uh, topics that become so critical in the workplace. It's made me think a lot more about how, you know, we hear stats in class about how adding diversity to a team increases your creativity and your productivity. And for me, I think I worked in a kind of homogeneous organization at first and then tra transitioned into a more diverse one and saw that working in real time. But here you really, like, the deal is sealed on that for me. Um, I had a really diverse learning team. I work in really diverse teams all the time for my coursework. And you really get to see, like, what that minority opinion does for you, how that just little bit of inquiry and sort of eliciting that opinion from the group really makes your overall idea stronger. And I think as someone who is opting into a role of managing cross-functional teams, it's gonna be really important being able to build those bridges to people that might you know, have a different opinion from you um, and make sure that you can come away with the best idea going forward. That's great. Andrew, do you wanna add anything to that? I, that was perfect. You got it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Um, all right, so then, um, Talk to me, you touched on the big parties, the small group dinners. Talk to me about Philadelphia. What were your thoughts before you got here and what are your thoughts about the city now? So I moved to Philly from Singapore um, mm -hmm. and so the contrast um, just this aesthetically hit me in the first sort of couple of days, I'd say. Um, yeah, Singapore being sort of pristine, manicured um, and Philly <laughs> Sort of being the opposite of that. <laughs> Not quite saying yeah. that. Um, but it, it sort of also dawned on me very quickly just how livable Philadelphia is, and, and that's become more apparent sort of as, the, as, the, as time has, has, has gone by, um, that it's very easy to navigate. Transportation is super convenient. Um, there are lots of places to explore, lots of places to, to, to eat, do things, um, and especially for someone who has uh, sort of does a lot outside of Wharton with my family, um, it's absolutely kids-friendly. Kids we're discovering parks um, sort of virtually every weekend. Um, so really just how, how livable it is as a city has struck me, and, and I don't think that that's apparent to a lot of people. Um, I, I even hear people say I'm coming to Wharton in spite of Wharton being in Philadelphia, whereas for, personally I feel like it should be I'm coming to Wharton and Wharton is in Philadelphia, yay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Jordan? Yeah, and I actually, I did a co-op when I was an undergrad um, at the Campbell Soup Company over the river in Camden and lived in Center City. So I had had a taste of it already and knew a lot of the great things about Philly. Um, really great food scene, really walkable city. Um, but I didn't really know how that would translate. And what I think a lot of strikes a lot of people at first is campuses in University City, most MBAs live in Center City. Does that become challenging or anything else? And you know, as Andre mentioned, transportation is really easy. I actually walk to school every day because I think it's a great opportunity to have that time either to chat with friends or family or anybody else that I might miss out on otherwise. And um, the bigger thing is I think it presents a really cool transition. When I cross the river in the afternoon, I know that I'm home. I know that I'm mm, back in like a social environment. Yeah. And it gives you a little bit of that like campus is work time. When I'm working on projects, you know, I'm over in University City. When I'm on the other side of the river, you know, I have my personal life. I, I do a lot of things. I try to explore a lot of new restaurants because I am a big fan of food. Um, so that's something I've, I've made it a point to do over the course of my time here. And what's great is you have the option either way. So we have a building located in Center City where we have access you know, at any time, day or night, to go in, to work on team projects, to have a space to study, have a space just to meet and chat. And it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. And I've absolutely loved it. I was in New York beforehand. I think the pace of Philadelphia is even better, um, a little bit more relaxed and allows you to, to really get out there and do a lot more things, so. 
And, and another thing to note is just how easy it is to get to go into New York. And so for a lot of people that recruit, um, say in finance, they have to make a lot of trips to, to New York. And it's super easy to jump on a mega bus or, or jump on the train and be in New York in two hours. And so it's access Philly's accessibility to sort of the key cities um, uh, is also a great factor. That's great. All right, on that note, I'm going to ask my colleague Meg Gallagher, who is going to uh, facilitate some Q&A for us right now to join the conversation. Um, I know that Meg's received a number of questions already. So Meg, do you want to give us the first one? Wonderful. Thank you, Mary Ellen, Jordan, and Andra. Um, we have received some wonderful questions throughout your discussion. Um, to kick things off, I want to circle back to uh, what you were talking about around the global nature of the program and the community. Can you highlight some of the global academic opportunities um, that you or your classmates have taken advantage of? Yes. So there are a number of, sort of structured school offered um, global opportunities. Um, there are uh, GIPs. Um, these are global immersion, immersion programs. Um, there are global modular courses, GMCs. All of these sort of have some academic and cultural component to exploring um, business uh, culture in, in, in different countries. Um, there are also very informal ways in which students explore, explore the world. Um, there are student-led treks. I personally went on one over the summer um, to Israel, and it's been the highlight of my, my Wharton experience. Um, so there is a lot that happens um, in terms of travel, and also within the classroom, there's a lot that happens in terms of case cases that explore global issues. Yeah, and I would just add, um, the global modular courses are really interesting, as are the global immersion programs. There's a modular course coming up in the spring that I'm considering um, looking into marketing to the Chinese consumer. Um, you know, obviously a huge new market, a lot of changes in the economy there, and having professors both from Wharton and from schools in China you know, kind of combine their expertise to, to help us learn that in a really short period of time, and then with time on either side just to participate in travel. Um, I actually traveled in Southeast Asia over winter break last year on just a personal trip with a few of my friends from school, but there were also a number of students who were in Southeast Asia on a GIP learning about uh, fashion and retail in Southeast Asia and, you know, exposure to a lot of really great corporations down there. So. The opportunities are both formal and informal and student-led and Wharton-led, but I think it, you really, it is up to you to pursue these things because there's just so many options out there that, uh, you know, it's easy enough to participate in one if you just have an idea in mind of what's relevant to you and your career interests or your personal interests. What one opportunity that's worth highlighting is the um, partnerships with sister schools um, mm -hmm. in different in different cities. And so, for instance, uh, uh, coming having come from London, I know that Wharton partners with LBS, and we have students that come over to Wharton from LBS, and students from Wharton that go over to LBS. Um, and so, for student, you, you know, if you were, for instance, interested in working in London after after Wharton, you don't have to sort of you don't have to give up that opportunity. You can sort of come to Wharton and do a year a, a semester. Uh, in London, and you'd still get the same opportunities to recruit as, as other students um, in, in that city. That's a great thing to touch on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wonderful. Meg? Thank you, guys. Um, so another question that we've received, and I know that you both touched on specific courses that you've taken um, and clubs that you're involved in, but the, is there one that stands out in particular to each of you? Sure. I'll, uh, I'll start. Um, so it's interesting, because this is kind of a two-part answer to this question, but I was lucky enough in our very first course, um, Management 610, to have Professor Adam Grant as uh, my professor. And you know, a lot of people have read his book, Give and Take, um, you know, may know his research. He publishes a lot of articles in the New York Times. So you know, I was just thrilled that he happened to be my professor. But I also saw that he was one of those folks that really wanted you to utilize him as a resource outside of class. And so, um, I spoke to him a few times about you know, what was going on with my career search. I also talked to him um, for a club to get him to speak at an event where he provided some um, information around give and take in a little more in an applied setting. Um, and that transitioned into an opportunity to be a teaching assistant for him this fall. So I'm actually working with him on his undergraduate course. And you know, it, it kind of, the big thing for me out of the gate was that it sort of humanized someone that seemed a little larger than life, at least in the, the business media. Um, but beyond that, I mean, he's been an incredible resource just to ask questions of. He knows a lot of you know fantastic people in the industry, always willing to make introductions. 
Um, I mean, if anyone's familiar with his book, I think he's a, a true giver and it's been a really fantastic job. And I mean, on top of that, if you ask a question in his class, he can cite five studies that, you know, reinforce his opinion. You know, he's always incredibly well informed. So it's just a really, really interesting thing. And it was the first experience I had on campus. So it was a really awesome one. That's great. I, uh, one class I took last semester that, that has stuck with me is negotiations. And before taking this class, my perception of negotiating is you know, taking a tough stance and, and making sure that I get the best deal. Um, and I just learned a nuance to that art um, that I, I just saw just how applicable it's going to be over the course of my life and, and just uh, you know, the utility of it seemed, it seemed endless. And I immediately applied the principles to renegotiating my rent um, nice. <laughs> and ended up saving $1,000. That's uh, outstanding. <laughs> so yeah, um, it, just, it, it highlighted to me the applicability of the material that I was learning in class. Right. Oh, that's fantastic. Very good. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. We've also received a number of questions about opportunities for women at Wharton. Andrew, I know that you quickly touched on Wharton Women in Business. Um, are there other resources that you could highlight for us? I think uh, my personal experience being a mother, um, I've just found that Wharton is a super supportive community. WIB is one of those avenues to, to gain that support. But within the administration, I think uh, there, there are a lot of women within the administration, uh, Mary Ellen being one of them. Um, and everyone is sort of conscious of how to make sure that women within the, within the Wharton community are getting the best out of the experience here. Um, and so, you know, when I first came and I was five months pregnant, I highlighted that to, to to my MBA advisor, and I just realized very quickly um, just how much support I was going to be getting um, in terms of making sure that that didn't, I didn't sacrifice any of my uh, experiences like, in terms of taking exams um, be right. because of that, specifically because of that. Um, just so, just across the campus, it's it's it, it's a very very supportive community for women. Yeah. And I mean, speaking from the male perspective on the issue, I um, <laughs> I make this uh, comment a lot. I think. A lot of the clubs that I'm involved in that are uh, women-led wind up being the more successfully run <laughs> clubs and you know more organized and and just you know I think there are a lot of really strong women in this on this campus, um, particularly my classmates, and I have never seen a circumstance in which women were left out of a particular group. I mean, I think when you look across the campus, if you were to take the group of people that were maybe in what were traditionally male dominated industries in the past, at Wharton, it's a pretty even mix of those folks. Um, you know, be that real estate, be that finance. I think I am frequently around women who came from those worlds beforehand. Um, and on the flip side, I think there's less of a stigma in traditionally female dominated roles to have men get involved. So. Marketing may have had that perception in the past. I don't think it's the case anymore. And we have, our board is basically split down the middle and it's been a fantastic board to be a part of. I also just want to highlight that within the faculty um, at Wharton that the strong represent representation of uh, women professors. Um, and so you know, my marketing professor was fantastic. Um, and you know, there are many such examples of, of Wharton faculty um, that, that are doing great things within their respective disciplines um, and, and very sort of strong and accomplished women. That's fantastic. Thank you. Wonderful. So we've received a number of questions around entrepreneurship at Wharton and people looking to move into the tech sector. Can you take a second to talk about our campus over in San Francisco? Sure, who sure. wants to do that? Um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll address the question more generally and then talk about semester in San Francisco a little. Um, it is not really a day goes by without hearing about a student's new idea or initiative that they wanna work on. I actually just yesterday um, was providing some marketing expertise to a student who is looking at a startup in the healthcare space and just wanted some advice on whether his he could do proof of concept testing with a small marketing budget. Um, but you hear about those things a lot. And there are so many resources here, whether it's formal classroom type instruction, independent uh, study projects where people kind of hone their idea while working with a professor, or using some of the resources that we have. Um, like the Small Business Development Center, or, you know, some of the consulting opportunities we have to work on those things. Um, everyone is exposed to those things and a lot of people, you know, take that initiative to start working on that idea while they're here. Um, and it goes kind of goes back to stretch experiences. This is a really good time to experiment. It's a really good time 
to have a good pool of students to bounce ideas off of, and, mm -hmm. and people utilize that really strongly. For those students who want to go into startups, who are looking to pursue technology roles, obviously having a camp campus in San Francisco uh, is a big deal. And so there are a little over 70 students out in San Francisco right now in their second year um, who are taking courses as their own small little cohort um, with you know, unique courses that aren't offered uh, in Philadelphia. Um, it's a competitive program to get into. There are GPA requirements and, and some essays involved, but you know, I've, I've already heard rave reviews from a lot of the students that are out there and the guest speakers that you can get when you're in San Francisco right. um, you know, are just exceptional for folks that wanna work in tech. That being said, um, my roommate is pursuing a career in tech. He wants to be in New York. Uh, went through the enterprise recruiting process of kind of getting himself out there and submitting um, work plans to companies, and um, he'll hopefully uh, be headed back to Venmo at the end of the year. So, nice. you know, new early stage startup, but um, with some great support from some bigger companies, and he's really found a niche there that he wants to pursue. So, that's awesome. I think it's worth also highlighting the support that Wharton itself gives to uh, students that are looking to start um, start businesses. And you know, one obvious um, uh, support is the fact that there's a building that's made available over the summer, um, 2401, which is our, our building in, in Center City, uh, for students that want to just um, take the time to sit down and sort of map through whatever their, their entrepreneurial idea is. Um, another thing worth noting is the representation of people that want to explore uh, entrepreneurial ideas within the class. I had the opportunity to interact with the incoming class, the class of 17. Well, they're already here. <laughs> no, they're coming. Oh, <laughs> the first year class. <laughs> the first year class. Um, and we did a sort of a little show by hand survey uh, of people that were looking to start um, new businesses, or at least sort of looking to starting new businesses, and I was uh, I was shocked. It was it seemed like at least a third, um, if not half, wow. a student raised their hand. I mean, you sort of um, some of them might drop out, but it just struck me how the the the, the co composition of the class had changed in terms of the, the types of things that people were looking to do, and there's a very big representation of the class that's looking to explore uh, business ideas. Yeah, that's great. We've received a question about fit. How did each of you know that Wharton was the right fit for you when you were applying to programs? So I'll certainly take this one because I had a, a really, really kind of strong um, reaction to it. So um, I had applied here um, as part of a probably five or six schools. And after I was accepted, I said, okay, I'll go down to Welcome Weekend. I'll see if it's a good fit. I don't know if these are my people, um, but I'll give it a shot. And honestly, after the first afternoon, I had kind of already made the decision, but I waited an additional day just to see if I was overreacting with the, all the excitement that uh, comes with Welcome Weekend. But what really sealed the deal for me was just the openness with which everyone was discussing what they were doing before, what they wanted to do, why they either like hadn't liked their career or wanted to build onto that a little more. And you know the willingness to be that upfront with people you had just met in those settings was, was a really big deal for me. The second thing I saw was that students were in front of me the whole time. So oh, right. when yeah. I was in a classroom setting learning about leadership opportunities here, students were talking to me about that. When we had a big reception, students were talking to me. When I went and met with an affinity group, it was students. And so it just gave a really good sense for how involved students were and that there's a spirit here of really giving back. And, you know, Andra and I are both serving now as student life fellows, so it's kind of our job to help first years along. But those were the folks that we saw when we came to campus. And, you know, it takes a lot to take a weekend off mm -hmm. to just talk to people about the school. And having come from an undergraduate in institution like the University of Florida that people are so passionate about, I was like, well, that'll never get displaced. Like, I'm always gonna be a Gator, this will just be another thing, but I honestly now have that passion for Wharton. I mean, I do a lot of those things, um, whether it's with first years, whether it's outreach, whether it's events like this, just because yeah. I really like this place and it's done so much for me already that I was willing to, to give back after seeing that demonstrated. That was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know if I can top that. <laughs> but I think one thing that really struck me just even going through the application process was just how collaborative or the emphasis on collaboration. And so, you know, the fact that the team based discussion is a very central part of the application mm -hmm. process. It just shows the emphasis the the school placed on, on teamwork and collaboration and sort of moving away from individualism to sort of uh, recognizing the power in the collective. Um, and the other, I mean, sort of related to that is the sense of community. community. And so having come here, just seeing how strongly people support each other uh, and, and the depth of the community that if, you know, if someone is in trouble, you know, everyone's there to sort of help you know, lift, lift them up. And, um, that, that's just been a wonderful thing for me, you know, coming in also with a sort of personal, um, pers I would say challenge, um, personal challenge of sort of being pregnant and then going through, um, going through uh, balancing MBA with, with having a baby. The support that I've received from, from various um, angles, students, um, as administrators, teachers, um, it, that's just enhanced that sense of community and I've sort of I've just fallen in love with this place. <laughs> um, when you think about, right before this started, I don't mean to cut off the questions, Meg, but I just, this one just came to mind as you were talking. Right before we started, we were talking about how stressed some of the folks who are watching this might be. Um, and you said something about if you only knew then what you know now, would you have a piece of advice for folks as they're applying that? Yeah, I mean, I think there are a few things um, that really struck out or stuck out to me once I got here. And the first one was ref the self-reflection component of your application is, is worthwhile. I think you're, when you're going through the process, you're like, all of this is for naught. I'm writing these silly essays so an admissions panel can do whatever. Um, but it really helps. And I think there are very few times in your life where you kind of decide you're going to stop doing what you're doing and do something else. And this kind of forces you to go through the process of thinking through, like, well, what is it that I want to do? Why is it that I want to be at Wharton? And having had that time to reflect, really set me up for success when I got here because I was pretty clear on what things yeah. I wanted to work on and you know where my development you know whether that be personal or career wise like where Wharton could fit in and I've leaned on those resources so I think the best example was that you know I had come off a sort of end of my annual review happened like right at the end of my my job and so there were some pieces of feedback that I got that I was like, okay, that's you know something I can work on. And when I got here, we offer an executive coaching and feedback program. And I was like, I'm gonna opt into that because I can at least tell whoever my coach is what uh, I wanted to work on. And it became such an actionable thing, something that I could work on each day, something that became really core to my internship. And I mean, I think the, the great thing, which you know it helps that this story is tidy, but, um, one of the things that I was kind of marked down on at my annual review at the end of my job was one of the things that I was ranked highest for um, at the end of my internship. And it just said a lot because I had the time to think about it. I had the time to figure out which things would help me develop that right. and then the time to actually apply it. So my thing is deep breath. The, the work mm -hmm. you're doing now is helpful, not mm -hmm. just for the application process, but for your next two years. Mm -hmm. Right, it helps with the fit piece, yeah. right? Yeah. And related to that and, and the issue of fit, I think when you take the time to understand how schools are different and you're applying to schools that really are a true fit to your personality, it, the process sort of almost becomes enjoyable. I mean, and, and it might be hard for people to, to, to think that <laughs> to way, understand um, that, to yeah. understand that. But you know, if you're applying to a school that, that where you've taken the time to get to know them and, and you're a natural fit for them and you're, you're yourself, you know, you, you don't have to, you, you don't even have to think about it as much it, it, that the whole process sort of just sort of flows in a sense. Mm -hmm. That's great. Wonderful. Meg, thank you. Have? And I feel like as a, as a final question to wrap things up with, um, we've received a great question. They would love to know what sort of impact the Wharton MBA has had on either your personal, professional, or both um, on your life at this point as a second Ooh. year student. <laughs> that is a good yeah. wrap up. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the, the impact has a lot of different levels for me. I think I was one who was in a pretty niche field. I mean, packaging engineering is a very small um, field. There are only, I think, five schools in the U.S. that even have programs. So um, I didn't have a very wide vantage point on what was out there and what I could do and um, what sort of opportunities existed for me. And so I think Wharton has really helped me sort of understand what my passion areas are 
And for me, it's not just that I like consumer focused work. It's not just that I was interested in marketing. Um, I have a really strong interest in talent development and recruiting and a bunch of activities that you know I participate in here as part of you know some of the additional things that are offered. So that was huge for me. The second one was from I'm from a small town in an isolated part of the US and I thought I had a good network, but it's nothing <laughs> compared to the network here. Yeah. And just having the opportunity to hear some of the stories of students in your class and knowing what they've been through and knowing challenges that they've faced and knowing that those people will be there for you later on in your career. I've already had examples where I've needed to reach out for to people for good, bad, or indifferent reasons. And it's amazing what this community does. And so for me, the big takeaway has been, I'm going to have three, four, five hundred friends leaving this place and I don't mean that lightly like these aren't acquaintances you go through the trenches with these folks and it really has just meant a lot to me being able to see how that community comes together and see how it goes forward um, after you graduate that's great Last yeah, um, it, Jordan had touched on the executive coaching program, and for me, that's probably one of the, the most impactful experiences I've had. Um, I've been used to doing sort of the smart thing in terms of my choices, um, especially in regards to my career. Um, but it really that that th that session helped me to reflect on um, what I wanted to do after Wharton, um, and really helped me to hone in on what my passions are and the fact that it's actually okay to follow my passion, um, even if it sort of it comes with some inherent risks. And so that really is um, probably the the biggest impact that that Wharton has made. That is terrific. Well, thank you guys very much. This was. Um, I learned so much about both of you, and I thought I already knew you so well. Um, I hope that our viewers also enjoyed the, uh, the time that we had together, and we look forward to seeing applications at some point in the future. Thanks very much, everybody.